you still working? Mm-hmm. I'm just finishing writing up my opinion. Can't you let it go now and take a break? <laughs> no. I promised I'd get the award to the parties by Friday. Mm. That won't be too long. Is this what you heard yesterday? Mm-hmm. Discharge of a 20-year employee. Shop steward. Company charged nation and fired him. 20 years? Whew. That's rough. Company claims he deserved it. You know, there's one thing I don't understand. I thought you arbitrators say that discharge is the equivalent of capital punishment. Don't employees have the right to expect that they'll only be terminated as a last resort? In general, that's true. Now, the company would have to have some pretty strong arguments that there was no other alternative. Do you want me to tell you about the case? Mm, if it doesn't take too long, I've got some things to do. No, just two minutes. I'd like to hear what you think. I've already made my decision. Let me outline the case for you, laying out both sides, labor and management. We'll see how you decide. All right. But only a few minutes. What did this shop steward do? Among other things, the company says he refused a direct order from supervisor. He was handling some union business when this allegedly took place. The union, on the other hand, argued that shop stewards have special protection under the law. Management's first witness was an assistant in the personnel department. She testified about how the grievance entered her office early one morning. Remember, this is management's side of the story. Damn it all, Mary. I just saw Gus outside and he's still doing that temporary reformer's job. What kind of an operation are you running here anyhow? Slow down, Mac. What's the problem? For Christ's sakes, didn't I tell you he isn't supposed to do that work anymore? What the hell do you think that we have this contract for? Here it is in black and white. An employee from the bargaining unit may work as a temporary foreman for a period not to exceed 90 days in any year. Gus is 90 days is up. If you don't switch him back, he's going to lose his seniority. That's a hell of a way to run a business. Oh, wait a minute, Mac. You don't have to swear at me. This is the first time I've heard anything about this. Let me check on it and I'll get back to you. Sure. No one knows a goddamn thing around here. I'm warning you, Mary. If you don't get this thing straightened out, there's going to be hell to pay. Hey, Gus, you gotta clear out of here. What? You can't stay on this job anymore. Hey, Mac, I don't know. I was just Listen, finishing. I'm telling you to leave. What's going on here? Mac, what are you doing in this department? My job, buddy, my job. Hey, look at Blockhead. I happen to be here on official union business, so clear out. Do you know what's going on? Well, I'm not sure. Mac, you keep out of this. I'm the shop steward here, and we've got a clear contract violation. What are you talking about? The contract says he can't work for more than 90 days as a temporary foreman. He started working this job more than three months ago. His time is up. Oh, for Pete's sake, Mac, that means he can't hold his job for more than 90 working days. That's 90 days, Monday through Friday. That doesn't mean you're supposed to figure in Saturdays and Sundays. Why, well, you dirty son of a hey, bitch. Matt. You're lying. We never said 90 working days. Three months is three months. Now you're trying to stretch it. You're always walking all over this contract. Well, I'm sick of it. Hey, well, cool down. I'll take this up with the boss. He'll straighten this out. Don't oh, give me any of that, you bastard. You always say you're going to check. If you knew what the hell you're doing, you'd have an answer by now. I'm sick of you and your chicken shit. Nothing ever gets done around here. You're incompetent. Let's go. Now, wait a minute. You stay right here. And, Mac, you go back to your station. No. Okay, that's it. Go back to your station or I'll take disciplinary action. I ain't leaving. All right. I had enough. You go back to your station, punch out and go home. You're suspended. Did anyone substantiate the supervisor's testimony? His testimony was backed up by another member of management who was outside in the hall. He said the grievance was so loud you could hear him downstairs. What kind of a record did the grievant have? The director of personnel brought in his file. It's a pretty bad record. I would appreciate if the witness would keep her personal comments to herself. We don't need her characterizing the grievance employment record in one way or another. That's for you to decide. Would you read the record? Within the past three years, failure to call in when he was absent from a shift, verbal warning, removal of notice on the company bulletin board without company approval, verbal warning, repeated failure to punch his own time card, written warning, unauthorized operation of company equipment, one day suspension, fighting, three day suspension. So the company now charged him with insubordination and suspended him? Yes. But I thought you said he was discharged. He was. Two days after the supervisor suspended him on the floor, 
The company came back to him, told him they had investigated his case, and that he was fired. We reviewed your case and looked over your past record. We decided we can't work with you anymore. You're discharged. Why did they decide that? At the hearing, the company's attorney listed the charges against him. The grievance here is guilty of a number of abuses, just one of which would be sufficient cause to justify the discharge. First, he ordered a fellow employee to leave his job. Mr. Arbitrator, I submit that in so doing, he overrode management's innate prerogative to assign, supervise, and direct employees in their work. I ask you to consider what would happen to this firm's operation if employees began taking orders not only from management, but union representatives as well. Second, and equally as important, the grievant refused a direct order. This is a classical example of insubordinate behavior. And if all of this were not enough, third, this man before us threatened and intimidated not one, but two representatives of management. I'm warning you, he said, if things don't work out the way I want them to, they will be hell to pay. This he said to a company representative. And when things did not work out as he wanted them to, he assaulted a second representative of management, a, uh, pushing him and physically threatening him with his hand. The grievance we maintain showed the utmost contempt for management using abusive language which by any standard is unacceptable to any reasonable human being. The union has argued that union officials cannot be treated in the same way as ordinary employees. This company does not disagree with that point. As long as union officials behave in a responsible manner while conducting union business. The behavior displayed in this case exceeds any protection a union steward might have. The grievance was not only grossly insubordinate, but also showed the utmost contempt for management in the presence of other employees. If employees see their elected officials getting away with such behavior, they will think that they may too. As a representative of his fellow workers, he should have acted responsibly and with discretion. This he failed to do. Was that primarily the company's case? No. Management also talked about the grievance past record and about the fact that they had cause to discharge him. The contract indicates that the company must have just cause for dismissal. It should be very clear to the arbitrator that the company followed all the necessary steps in getting to the point where we are today. We followed all the standards of progressive discipline. He received lesser penalties for minor offenses and greater penalties for major offenses. We don't want to fire someone. We want to help him improve. But an employee must go halfway. We can't do it all ourselves. We first suspended the grievant. We had every right to do so. The manager warned him that he would be disciplined if he did not follow his orders. Every employee should know that when he is insubordinate, he will be disciplined. Only after we carefully reviewed the case did we actually discharge him. As shop steward, he should have understood the nature of progressive discipline. He received a verbal warning, a written warning, a one-day suspension, and then a three-day suspension. The next penalty is discharge. He should have known that one more infraction would have meant that he was up and out. The company has always been fair in assessing penalties with its employees. It has been so in this case. Arbitrators may or may not agree with the decision of management to terminate a grievant, but they must be careful not to substitute their judgment as to the appropriate penalty for that of the company. 
unless it can be shown that the discipline imposed was arbitrary, capricious, or discriminatory, a clear abuse of management discretion, they should not change the company's decision. The minds of reasonable people may differ as to the degree of discipline, but an arbitrator should take great care in not usurping the function of management. The company was neither arbitrary, capricious, or discriminatory in its action, and its decision in this case should prevail. Well, I have to admit, it sounds pretty bad. Mm-hmm. The company argued that even though shop stewards are union representatives, they're also regular employees. As employees, they're subject to the same reasonable rules and regulations that apply to all other workers. Where does it say that shop stewards are protected? That goes back to the Wagner Act and Taft-Hartley. Employees cannot dominate unions or interfere with their lawful activities. Well, I guess I have to agree with the company. If you overstep certain boundaries, you're subject to discipline, just like anyone else. Wait a minute. You haven't heard the union side of the case. The testimony the union presented was slightly different. The grievant was the union's major witness. I got to work at about 8 in the morning. I always try to get there a little early in case there's been a problem from the day before. I like to handle these things as much as possible on my own time because I don't want to hassle from my foreman. And lately, I'd say for the past two or three months, there have been a lot more grievances to handle. There have been some changes during that time. New division manager and a new supervisor in the department where Gus is working as a temporary foreman. At first, I thought maybe they were so busy, they didn't have time to talk over some of these things with us. But it soon became perfectly clear what they were up to. They either let grievances sit, and boy did they pile up, or they went around us and talked to the employees directly. You may think that this business with Gus was a minor thing, but it wasn't. It was the same kind of shit that, excuse me, problem that we had to deal with every day. I had talked to them about taking Gus out of his management job three different times. They wouldn't even give me an answer. I was the laughing stock of my own people. Why belong to a union when you can't enforce the terms and conditions of a contract? So that morning I was looking over the schedule and what do I see? Gus is still doing that temporary foreman's job. I didn't waste a minute. I beelined it over to Mary's office. You free, Mary? Sure, Matt. Come on in. What am I going to do, huh? Just what am I going to do? Those guys are driving me crazy. Oh, what's the matter? I've been trying to get this thing with Gus straightened out for a week. Look at this contract, huh? Am I blind or what? Read this, please. Yes? Gus's 90 days is up and they aren't doing anything to shift him back. If they don't move him out of that foreman's job, he's going to lose his seniority. That's a hell of a way to treat an employee. I'll see what I can do about it, Mac. The division manager and Gus's supervisor are new. Between us, they don't know what's going on right now. <laughs> Mary, Mary, nobody seems to know what's going on right now. We've got to get all of these things straightened out or there'll be hell to pay. You can't run a business like this. At that point, I decided the best thing to do was to go see Gus. He's an easy-going kind of guy, and I knew that if I didn't light a fire under him, nothing would happen. This wasn't just his problem. It affected the entire unit. The company claims that you directed Gus to leave his temporary foreman's job. Is that true? No, it is not. It seems pretty strange to me that Gus isn't here to testify. Mr. Arbitrator, he is out of order. He will have every opportunity to cross-examine the witness when I'm done. Our witness is totally credible and is in the best position to tell you what took place, far better than anyone else. It would be helpful if you both reserved your argumentation for later. Would you proceed? Okay, Mac. Would you tell us what happened when you talked to Gus? Hey, Gus, listen. Stop what you're doing and come out in the hall with me for a minute, huh? Hey, but Mac, I don't think I'm supposed to leave no, here. No, I'm not telling you to leave. I just want to talk to you about this temporary foreman's job. Hey, what's going on here? Mac, what are you doing in this department? My job, George, my job. I happen to be here on official union business. Do you know what's going on? Well, yeah, I think I... Uh... Don't ask us. Ask me. I'm the shop steward here, and you're supposed to be dealing with me over contract violations. What are you talking about? 
The contract says Gus here can't work as a temporary foreman for more than 90 days. He started working this job more than three months ago. His time is up. I've told you and the division supervisor this three times before. Oh, for Pete's sake, Mac, don't be an idiot. What? That means he can't do this job for more than 90 working days. That's 90 days, Monday through Friday. That doesn't mean you're supposed to figure in Saturday and Sundays. Oh, no. Look it. I was there when we negotiated this clause. We didn't mean working days. We meant calendar days. Three months is three months. All right, Mac. I'll discuss this with the boss and we'll get back to you later. Wait a minute. Don't walk away from me. What do you mean that you'll get back to me? He's got a problem right now. Gus, you get back to work. And Mac, you get the hell out of this department. Now, wait a minute. Damn it all, I've had just about enough of this crap. I've got to get an answer. We can't keep drifting. This is a very important issue. Okay, that's it. You don't seem to understand. You're a troublemaker, and you always have been a troublemaker. This is the last straw. Punch out and go home. You're suspended. The charge of insubordination in this case is ludicrous. Shop stewards are guardians of the collective bargaining agreement. They must police it and protect it from erosion and attack. To suggest, as the company has in this case, that shop stewards undermine managerial authority when they perform their function in a vigorous and militant manner is outrageous. If shop stewards must live in fear and trembling of possible retaliation from the company, they become totally ineffectual. Consider also the devastating effect this would have on the union as an institution. The grievant did not tell the temporary foreman to leave his job. He did not counsel him to disobey a company order. He merely spoke to him about a problem that was symptomatic of the general attitude of the company. It disregarded the collective bargaining agreement whenever it was convenient to do so. The grievant has made every reasonable effort to get management to act and to rectify this contract violation. <laughs> There's no doubt that he felt frustrated in dealing with the company. But if there is to be any blame, it must be borne by the supervisor. He failed to respond in settling grievances. He overreacted when he felt his authority was being challenged. He, I would submit, was the aggressor in this case. The company has made a great deal of the fact that the grievant refused a direct order from the supervisor to leave the department. Yet under these circumstances, the supervisor had no right to order a shop steward around in that manner. He was there on official union business and was entitled to be there. If a shop steward can be told to leave every time he begins to discuss a grievance with a member of management, the company will be able to undermine the union and render it impotent. Finally, the company has commented about the use of strong language. Well, we all know we're not in a Sunday school. It was shop talk, pure and simple. You can't expect people in the heat of debate to speak with restraint. They were used in a general way. Nothing personal was intended. That seems to be a different version of what took place. But you have to admit the grievance record was pretty bad. In the union's closing statement, they spoke about his record and the way in which the company handled his discharge. The arbitrator must determine two things in this case. Was there wrongdoing? And if so, was the degree of penalty imposed appropriate? We believe that through our testimony, we have unequivocally shown that the grievant was not guilty of wrongdoing. The burden of proof rests with management. It carries that burden because the contract states that an employee may only be disciplined or discharged for just cause. Management must show by at least a preponderance of the evidence that the employee did precisely what he was charged with. In this case, insubordination. This management failed to do. We would further argue that the company was lacking in just cause because it acted both arbitrarily and capriciously. The grievance was first suspended and then later discharged after an investigation. That investigation was a sham. The 
company relied solely on the word of the supervisor. How can you have a proper investigation where the grievant is not even allowed to be present and where no key witnesses are asked their version of what took place? The supervisor served as witness, prosecutor, and judge all rolled into one. The company had made up its mind in this case and did what it wanted to do. One of the principles of labor relations is that discipline should be corrective and not punitive. Discharge should only be the last resort. To uphold this discharge would be a gross injustice. The discipline does not match the supposed crime. We all know that discipline must be reasonably related to the seriousness of the offense and the employee's record. Let us consider that record. The union president, you will recall, testified about the grievance personnel file. Sure, there are a lot of things on Mac's record, but I have to think the company is gunning for him. Uh, that is pure conjecture on the witness's part. Can't we just stick to the facts? I believe you were telling us about some of these past infractions. Would you continue? Just about everything on here had to do with union business. Look at this one. Removal of notice from company bulletin board without company's approval. Now that happened just before the representation election. The company put up a notice directed at the employees telling them all the bad things about the union. Mac here tore it down. It wasn't until after the election was over before we got it all cleared up. And this not punching his own time card. What a trumped up deal. A shop steward can't always punch his own card because he's on special business. Why he got a written warning for that, I'll never know. The same's true for not calling in. And when he used the company's Xerox machine to run a notice about a union meeting, they stuck it to him. They never complain if someone uses a Xerox machine to run off a notice about a church meeting or a company picnic. I see no reason, Mr. Arbitrator, to re-argue these previous penalties. These penalties were worked out in conjunction with the union or were determined by an arbitrator. Well, I think you should know that there's some, uh, what do they call it, uh, union animus? around here wow so what did you finally decide i know what i decided i want to know what you decided <laughs> hey wait a minute where are you going what did you decide i'm going to start lunch you're the arbitrator you can make the decision lots of luck mm -hmm.